video, we'll briefly discuss the large elliptical galaxies, take a look at uh, classifications, Hubble photographs, and some possible uh, ways that these large galaxies might have developed. So the uh, classification starts in the 1920s with Hubble giving us a, a, a diagram. And we see the elliptical galaxies on the left, uh, E zeros for the more spherical quote-unquote elliptical galaxies, and uh, E7 for the very elongated galaxies from our point of view. Um, so the spirals are not thought to gradually change into ellipticals. This is not a uh, transition diagram with time running left to right or right to left, uh, but we'll get to formation uh, theories later. Looking back in time by looking at galaxies that are very far from us, all the types of galaxies were present. However, they were smaller, not as well developed, and um, I believe more spiral galaxies than exist uh, presently. So an elliptical galaxy, this particular photograph when it uh, loads, will show us a smooth light distribution. Very much contrast to the spirals where there are, of course, spiral arms, concentrations of dust, um, H2 red regions in the spiral arms. The elliptical galaxies are have a smooth change in brightness from the edge towards the center. There is a higher density of stars towards the center of uh, these galaxies. This particular one is outside our lo local group, 50 million light years away and about the same size as the Milky Way. Large elliptical galaxy, about 65 million light years from the Milky Way. Another characteristic of the elliptical galaxies is that their stars are very old and there's little cold gas and dust in these galaxies. So they are not uh, currently forming very many new stars. There may be an occasional uh, formation of the stars, and, but uh, it's not a general trend. Most of the stars are very, very old and uh, give us a characteristic kind of yellowish color to the elliptical galaxy compared to the spiral galaxies that tend to be more blue-white because the spiral galaxies are currently forming stars and some of those are very hot and uh, blue-white in color. So let's go to another uh, case here. About 210 million light years from the Milky Way, about one and a half times the size of the Milky Way. Again, smooth light distribution, a little heavier concentration of stars towards the center, higher density of stars towards the center of the galaxy. And M87, 54 million light years away from the Milky Way, a little bit larger than the Milky Way, it has an interesting jet of material coming out from the center of the uh, galaxy, and it probably is an indicator that there's a supermassive black hole at the uh, center of this galaxy. We're looking here at a cluster of galaxies. Most of the objects on this slide are galaxies, not stars. And towards the center of galaxy clusters, there tend to be larger elliptical galaxies, and there tend to be more ellipticals towards the center and fewer spiral galaxies, and more spiral galaxies towards the edge of the galaxy clusters. And that would make sense if collisions play a role in forming elliptical galaxies. Uh, towards the center of a galaxy cluster, the density of uh, galaxies is higher. Galaxies, compared to their size, are much closer together uh, than stars, individual stars in our galaxy. So if a star is the size of your little fingernail in our galaxy, the next closest star could be 150 miles away. The uh, situation with galaxies is if you take the size of a galaxy, the next closest galaxy could be just 20 times the size of that galaxy away. So collisions are much more probable um, and as a result of those collisions, we may uh, have the situation that spiral galaxies are 
merging to form elliptical galaxies, and ellipticals and spirals are merging to form giant elliptical galaxies. So let's uh, continue on our, our slides here. Black holes have been found and inferred, at least, in the centers of elliptical galaxies. Um, looking at a detailed view of the center of NGC 7052, and the material here, this ring, is about 3,700 light years across. That's smaller than the distance from the sun to the center of our galaxy by about a factor of five, uh, maybe six. That the uh, situation here is that astronomers can measure the spread of velocities from material here near the center of these galaxies. And what they find is there are some galaxies moving very fast towards us, some moving very fast away from us. And that would be caused by the presence of a supermassive black hole. It's gravity causing these stars to orbit very rapidly. Then uh, here's another giant elliptical galaxy. And I'm not saying much about the dwarf elliptical galaxies, galaxies that are, say, 10 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy. Um, but the giant ellipticals are easier to see. The dwarf ellipticals, we probably don't, we're certain we do not see all that uh, uh, we detect galaxy clusters and see the giant elliptical galaxies in those clusters, but don't detect all the dwarf elliptical galaxies in those clusters. Um, so formation theories. Well, one way we could generate an elliptical galaxy rather than a spiral galaxy is when this big massive gas and dust cloud starts to collapse because of its self-gravity, there's very little rotation, very little rotation. And the rotation tends to form the disk of a spiral galaxy with gas and dust in that disk. For the ellipticals, it's thought that they could form their stars first. And as a consequence, not much gas and dust left to form a spiral disk and no rotation to help with that. So we have uh, the gas and dust being used up in forming the stars of the elliptical galaxy. And we have random orbits for the stars going down towards the center and back out, but in kind of a radial direction, in and out as opposed to the spiral galaxies where the material orbits more or less in circles around the center of the galaxy, the material that's in the disk of the spiral galaxy. We have for the elliptical galaxies just random inclination of orbits, tilt of orbits. They're not orbiting all in the same direction. Um, they're definitely, you, know, you can see from the photographs, there's no disk, flat disk for the elliptical galaxies. And there's much more random motion for the stars. They've not been sort of processed into a disk the way the spiral galaxies have uh, to have an organized rotation. The, what causes the stars to form before the dust and gas disk develops? Well, perhaps these giant elliptical galaxies came from a region that was cooler. They were able to radiate off their thermal energy and keep the gas and dust cool. That type of temperature is an aid to stars forming. So if their gas and dust was cooler, they'd more generally form stars. Uh, it's easier for the material to come together. If it's not hot, then uh, gravity can dominate and pull the gas and uh, dust in to form a star. In the centers of the uh, galaxy clusters, then, as I've said, collisions of galaxies may play a role in uh, developing these large elliptical galaxies. So I'd encourage you to pause the video here and perhaps read some of these resources for descriptions of the elliptical galaxies and the spiral galaxies and just galaxies in general. I found these sites to give a nice uh, brief summary of uh, galaxies and their formation processes and their characteristics. So pause the video and copy these down. These are not links that you can click on. And if you'd like to see some other physics and astronomy videos, uh, these two websites are free, no registration. Uh, the videos are listed. There's a link, direct link to the YouTube video that'll play. And if you uh, enjoy the videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.